everybody. Today we have two stories. One is called A Trip, which is a short story, and Scarcity. It's a word that we'll learn about as we read the story. And our question today is how can we work together to meet people's needs? So now we're trying to solve a problem, but we're trying to figure out, well, what do people need and how could I help? Sometimes a kid will do something like see that someone needs a pencil and say, would you like to use this one because they have another, I have an extra. So we'll learn the word scarcity as we're, as we're watching this, as you're watching this video and I'm telling the story. The vocabulary we have today, we have ago, whole, enough, word, toward, and above. When something is ago, that's a time, like a long time ago. It tells something that has happened already. We use that word in a sentence. Whole, when you have everything. All of it, a whole pie. No pieces are cut out of it. That's different than whole with an H. If you take the W away, it's something that you dig. If you have the W, it's when you have all of something. Enough, when it's sufficient. You don't need more. You're good. Word. A lot of people say that when uh, they're trying to figure out vocabulary. What is that word? Above. My hand is above my head. And toward. My hand is coming toward you. That means it's getting closer. So above is over and toward is closer. Again, our question is, how can we work together to meet people's needs? The first story is a trip. A while ago, there's that time, I spent 10 whole days with my pal Bert and her mom. It was not enough time. I can tell Bert in one, about Bert in one word. She's chipper. Above everything, this girl likes fun. And that girl's not scared to get dirt on her. Toward the end of that trip, I went with her family on the, on the water for the first time. Bert urged me to take a turn with a water board, a bo uh, being pulled in the water on a board. I swam instead. Didn't do it. This summer, it's my turn for Bert to visit. It will be fun. Okay. So how do we help when someone needs something? What can we do? So here's the word scarcity. You may have never seen that word before. And do you see how in this picture, there's ice on the tree? Trees aren't supposed to have ice. Something in this story will help us help to explain all that. So what is scarcity? These three girls each want an orange, but only one orange is left. Not all the girls can get what they want. Things people want and use are called resources. Just like these girls, people want more resources than they can have. Sometimes there aren't enough resources. There's a word for this when there's not enough. It's called scarcity. All countries, rich and poor, have scarcity in some way. No country has enough resources for everything it wants. So when you have only one orange, but you have three that would like it, scarcity. So how does scarcity happen? All resources can be scarce, but some resources become more scarce at times. For example, a few years ago, cold weather harmed the orange trees. Then the farmers had fewer oranges to pick and sell. The oranges uh, didn't taste good and they, they died because of being frozen. Oranges became scarce, scarce, scarcity. There weren't enough oranges for everyone who wanted one. So here you can see that ice on the oranges. So when the weather turns bad where they grow, grow oranges and they get uh, it's too cold at the wrong time of the year, the oranges end up dying and then we have scarcity. We don't have enough oranges or to make to, to put in the supermarket, but we also don't have enough to make orange juice when there isn't enough. What happens when oranges are scarce? Then a food company must choose how to use them. The company could make orange juice or it could just sell the whole fresh orange the company might not be able to do both, so they have to choose because of the scarcity. 
In fact, in 2004, four hurricanes hit Florida and harmed many fruit trees. Farmers had less fruit to pick and sell in the spring of 2005. So look what the hurricane did to all the fruit trees. Not so good. Making trade-offs. A food company might decide to sell just fresh whole oranges. That means it's also deciding that it's not going to sell juice. The company's making a trade-off. To sell only fresh whole oranges, it must give up something. The company gives up selling orange juice. When you trade off, you have to give something up to get what you want. Prices. Well, if oranges are scarce, not everyone can have them, but many people still want them. So stores raise the price of scarce items. During the pandemic, there were a lot of things that were scarce, like uh, baby wipes or toilet paper or Kleenex. And that's a call to scarcity. Oranges cost more money when they are scarce. If people want oranges, they must pay a higher price. And so they put a note on the oranges when this happened. It said, recent severe cold weather in California, Arizona, and Mexico has impacted many fruit and vegetable crops. Many items are in short supply scarcity, which has caused prices to rise. We apologize for any inconvenience to our customers. And in fact, orange prices were low before the 2004 Florida hurricanes damaged the oranges. And after the hurricanes, the prices went up because the oranges were scarce. Making choices. Scarcity means people have to make choices at the store. If oranges are scarce, what are the choices? Well, people can pay a higher price for the oranges or they can also find a better price by trying a different store, or maybe they just buy another fruit. Here's all they decided to put the oranges in the store instead of making orange juice. And someone has to decide what to do. How do you want to shop? Because the stuff is not there. A scarce toy. So just like oranges, toys can be scarce. Ben wants to buy his sister a popular toy for her birthday, but the store near their house has sold out. That means the toy has become scarce, scarcity. Ben must choose. Ben looks at other stores around town and at last he finds the toy. But the store selling the toy is charging a price way above what Ben wants to pay. Now Ben has to make a choice. Should he buy the toy at the higher price or should he keep looking for a better price? Or maybe he should buy his sister something else. What would you do? He's uh, trying to figure out what decision he should make because of the scarcity of that particular toy. Amazing but true. Cars can't run without gas. And in the late 1970s, there wasn't enough gas. People waited in long lines for hours just to fill up their cars. Not everyone who wanted gas could actually get it. Some people even stopped driving their cars. And toward the end of the gas shortage, People were turning to walking or riding bikes or taking the train. They were making choices. So this is one of the signs that might have been there. Gas shortage. Sales limited to 10 gallons of gas per customer. So here's an old gas station and an old VW. And here's the sign that they had at the gas station. So what do you think you would do if there was something scarce at the store and you wanted to buy that particular thing? That scarcity is kind of tough. So you have to think about that question. How can we work together to meet people's needs? Do we help them learn how to make choices? That's one way to help meet your needs. Maybe we try and figure out if there's something you can use instead and see if that will help you. But it's a tough question. Sometimes you want what you want, even if it's not available. I hope you liked the story. That one was a non-fiction story. It's about true things that happen. Actually, it's about economics. So it's a special kind of social science. Have a good day. Bye.